guy is back again. Yes, you saw me before. Well, I'm Bill Boggs. I'm the executive producer of the show. And Mort, for reasons of his own, couldn't be here and asked me to step in. So this is what I want to tell you. Hey, gang, remember the words to that great song, As Time Goes By, the words, woman needs man and man must have his mate that no one can deny. Well, these days, plenty of women are denying it by setting themselves up as conniving hunters using every wily trick in their thumb-worn books to trap and marry a man. And the ones that aren't doing that are going off and having babies by themselves. It is time that the men of America wake up and see that the women who want to marry them may not love them at all. In fact, statistics show that more and more of our little feminine friends only see marriage as another business deal. Well, baby, if you are out there right now setting the traps, old Uncle Bill is going to spring him tonight. Marriage plots and prenuptials. Let's go. Margaret, you set out, you've been going around, you've been on every television show in the United States of America a few times, including my old shows, telling people how you trapped your husband and how they can trap men. Why did you have to trap a man yourself? Well, it's very simple because, you see, the woman who has the hardest time is the woman who has an awful lot to offer. And if there's one question that men ask me over and over again, it's why do I see these fantastic women with these bimbo men? And then... <laughs> What? In our defense, guys, in our defense, what is a bimbo man? <laughs> well, it's a man that uh, is not the most aggressive person in the world. It's a man that doesn't have the courage to go up to the woman he really wants to invite out and invite her out, and for very good reasons, because... The man who doesn't have courage To go up to the woman man. he really wants. In other mm -hmm. words, the woman oftentimes don't realize that the man does not have a lot of courage to go up to the woman he really wants, for many reasons. One being that um, when he reached puberty way back in high school, that's also when his self-image as a male formed and gelled. And so, uh, inside it's that man... not the only thing that formed and gelled. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Margaret. But anyway, no, but the point is Mark, that this right, is the self-image that he carries the rest of his life. So if the woman knows that he will only approach her when he's reasonably sure she's not going to embarrass him or reject him publicly, then uh, the, if she doesn't know this, she could be sending out the wrong signals, putting out psychological barriers. Amer American men have been emasculated. I've been saying it a lot. I'd like to see them change. I'd like to see them more forceful and uh, not be intimidated by women. And I think that uh, what I, uh, I really mean to say is that Men have to fulfill their potentials and not be asked to be subservient to women because women want a, uh, a career and a family and a fast track. And uh, well, let me give more. Just say you get more of a sense. In, in your book, Margaret, you go as far as telling women how to catch the big fish: the doctors, the lawyers, the bankers. Aren't you really just trying to teach these women how to hitch up with a guy who's got the big bucks? Oh heavens no! And after all, many oh, women. No. no. <laughs> No, we want them to marry the poor women. The well, poor let me tell you something. An awful lot of women don't need the meal ticket anymore. They're looking for a partner, and they're looking for somebody no. to share their success with. Wait a second. No. Hold on. No. no. Look, no. This is the first woman who had something to yell about. <laughs> Look, you don't need the meal ticket anymore. Are you, are you married? No. Stand up. No. Nope. Stand up. <laughs> do you, what, what do you want? Do you want a rich guy with a BMW, or do you want to be out there working 50 hours a week yourself to support some guy you're really in love with? I want companionship. Thanks. Hi. I'm sincerity. You don't care about money. No. Means nothing to you. Does anybody I, believe her? I no, been. she's in the minority. And I think whether it's a, um, a marriage relationship or a cohabitation thing over a period of years, there is trouble in the wind. And men have to face the reality because your wife or your girlfriend 
could be your worst enemy in America. You got to be careful. Once that divorce or the breakup of the relationship takes place, you can't tell what can happen. It can be a very it could be a very vindictive situation. Now, I'm not saying that all women are that way, and I don't want that to be the case. But it very often, when it hits the courts in some form, there's a disaster. Right. Simply right, let me go to agreement. Elvira. It could be. Is it Elvira, you've been happily married for 30 years. No. <laughs> Haven't you? I am happily married. And now, I'd if like someone to... had come to you, if your yes. mate had come to you before the marriage proposing some kind of a prenuptial agreement to protect his assets and your assets, prior to marriage 30 years ago, what would you have said? How would you have I felt? I would say to him, damn you, are you in love with me? And do you want to marry me because you love me? Or do you want my money? I want to answer it. Okay. I deserve it. And I deserve it. Great. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think you deserve money? She offered it. I took it. And it's mine. What's your name? I'm Bob Feinschreiber. How are you doing? Good well, to see you, Bill. I'm having a nice time. I'm just... But what's going on here? This is Margaret Kent's husband? That's right. Wait, would you come with me for a second? I sure will. Sure. Just a second. Margaret, come, come here. You must divorce her! Sit. Sit. No, sit. No, sit. Come on. No, sit down. So I want you to sit next to Mark. Take it out. No, come on. Take it out. He won't sit next to his wife. Sit down. No room. No room. That's all right. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. All right, go ahead. Back to your seat. Back to your seat. Anyway, Diana, this is what we were saying. Hold Just a second. That. Man is a result of that book, our oh, Vira. Recent surveys indicate that we're returning to more traditional values. More women want to marry, and they want to have children much sooner so they can beat the biological clock. Is this another sign that feminism may, in fact, be fading? No, I think we women are going to become stronger in our communities. We are going to become stronger in politics because we do stand for a lot, we do. We raise our families, we take care of our husbands, we work, and I think we're very competent people. I wish I had a flag. <laughs> I, could, I could wait. Thank Diana. you. Right, go ahead, Dan. When a lot of the parents are coming to me to make arrangements for the children without their knowledge, but there's so many beautiful young ladies, highly educated, and they cannot meet the right one because today when they meet somebody, the gentleman is not wanted to get married because they're living together. For what purpose? They so you don't advise live people living together? I take a border in free. <laughs> For what purpose? And then he moves Why out. Are you running and a supermarket of women? It is a fact. In all the years that I've been practicing matrimonial law, in all the years that I've been handling people with divorce, I take the trouble to go into the background and I discover that these people should never have married to start with. They start. They married for the wrong reason. Either they were lonely or they were getting out of the house, or they didn't understand what it was, and they were creating a fantasy. So he's like at last desperation? He, if he is, that is what you're a sociologist he and he understands what the background is, then he's doing the right thing. But if you're going out there to look for that fellow, don't look for the one who makes tickles in your stomach. Look for the one and find out about his background. Find out how he thinks. What's wrong with Find tickles? out what his father, What's wrong? about his weather. Tickles. Find out about all those things. And then you get the hurt. Yeah, yeah, let's hear it for tickles over here. Love, 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 love tickles. You can what tell you the most you get. Do you get? Right, one at a time, one at a time. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Fields, I work in the singles business also. And I happen to know of a woman who asked me to check up on you because she sent you money to find her a boyfriend. Here she lives in Florida. You're sending her people letters from people that live like in California, Oregon. How That's the hell right. are they Glad supposed the to meet? Call me up. 
You talk nonsense, my friend. No, I don't talk nonsense. You I have it in nonsense. my office. That's you why I said stories. I know who you are. I don't know anything about it. Whoever has anything to say, they could call me. I'm in the office seven days a week, so don't talk nonsense. But Mr. Field, will you please tell these people what you do besides just getting an application? What do you check on each one of these people before you make that introduction? You made a how statement. Do you, how you do you know that you're not getting some too? criminal who's giving you so something? They've never had any criminals for 65 we're, we're, we're years. I'm not so sure about that because huh? you don't know what happened to them. Do you know what happened? I don't, but I know from experience of what's happened to Are you to married people. or single? That isn't your business at this point. <laughs> Tell me, I think there's a fundamental thing that happens. You have a prenuptial and something tilts, something changes. It's like saying, we don't want to take that safety net. We want to have the risk of putting it all together no, on the line. No, it's just personal. No, but I think that that's, I think something changed. That's what I'm feeling here. Yeah, it would change. If I had a prenuptial agreement, I wouldn't have one. I think it's impersonal well, and it's Nobody tacky. likes to Wait die, minute, you but you many, need a will. How many men out there marry women for <laughs> their money or for their father's yeah. money or for where they come you from? You don't listen, Amy. <laughs> I am listening. listening. An hour ago, you time. didn't say anything, but now yeah, you're talking. How many men I know that say I want a rich girl? It I protects, mean, hello. It also protects women. No, I'm just yeah. saying it goes both ways, okay? And I just think it's tacky, yeah. it's impersonal, and as far as I'm concerned, it's wrong. Because okay. when I marry the man I marry, yeah, but when you get divorced, I'm it's not your... going to get divorced. Oh divorce. yes, I heard that so before. So go with a negative attitude. Oh wait a second. Oh, I heard it before. Mark.